Hi guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked, and today I'm going to be showing you how to take an HDR time lapse photo. Now, if you'd like to know how to take an HDR photo, please click, click here and I will explain it in that video. Um, we're going to brush over how to take an HDR photo a little bit, but mostly we're going to dive right into the time lapse and how to do it. So, knowing how to take an HDR photo, again, you want to click right here and that will show you how to take an HDR photo. So, I've got my location set up exactly how I want it. I have my lighting on my camera. I've already gone through and set up the lighting on one. I've actually got it set on aperture priority, so it's kind of like in manual mode in a manner of speaking. Uh, I've never tried an aperture priority, but I've read a lot of stuff on the internet. Everyone says to shoot your HDR time lapse in aperture priority, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I'm going to be shooting right in back here. Some things that you need to have before you jump into taking your photo. You need to set it up. You need to get your lighting right if you're, not, if you're doing it in manual mode. If you're doing an aperture priority, it's going to help you manually or automatically with that. Um, you need to make sure you have uh, a card that's empty because you're going to be taking a lot of photos. Um, now, a lot of people will tell you to shoot in, in RAW. If you have a 32 gig card, uh, I would shoot in RAW. But if you just have a 16 gig or lower card, pop over to the highest JPEG setting. Um, that's going to get you that render you the most photos. Uh, in RAW, I'm going to get about 900 photos on a 16 gig card, and it's going to render me about 20 seconds of footage. So it's like it's not that great in my opinion. But in JPEG, I can still get a pretty high quality shot, and it's going to give me uh, about 32, 35, uh, 100 photos to work with. The more photos you have, the longer your time lapse will be. Um, so if you shoot it in JPEG you get roughly a little over 30, between 30 and 40 seconds of footage. So that's what I would do. Um, so you want to make sure your card's empty. You want to make sure you have a full battery because it's going to be taking a lot of pictures. Now, I just put one battery in here. It's fully charged. It should make it through all 3,500 pictures. No problems, no question asked. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to actually set up the ACR time lapse settings. Um, we're just going to set up right here. I'm going to show you how to take those settings, how to set them up. And then we're going to start taking pictures and about two, two and a half hours from now, I'll be finished. It does take a while, so if you're planning to do an HDR time-lapse photo, uh, doing the JPEG style, you're gonna be here, you're gonna be sitting around your camera, you're gonna be around your camera for roughly two, two and a half hours. So I was smart enough and brought my laptop, brought something to drink, brought some snacks. I'm just gonna be hanging out in my car, uh, watching this, coming and checking on it every half an hour or so till it's done. So it's gonna take a while. Um, so that's the hardest thing, is to have the patience to sit around and let these photos take. Alright, so let's set our settings up. Uh, I've deleted my card, make sure there's nothing on it. I'm going to hit the delete button here. We're going to set up Magic Lantern now. Uh, we're going to go to mm, shoot, HDR bracketing on. We're going to do three times one EV. Uh, we're going to take a picture every three seconds. We're going to turn our intermeter. Uh, we're going to hit Q here and it's going to be on no wait. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click shoot. And now it's going to take a picture every three seconds. And it's going to do that till the card's full. So now I'm just going to go back to my car and hang out for two and a half hours while it takes these pictures. Actually, before we do anything, we'll just double check. So I'm going to go on and stop it. And it's kind of, you gotta. And we we'll put it on off. We just wanna, one, make sure that we're getting different exposures. And as you can see, we are getting three different exposures. So, menu, erase, all images on card, boom, go back to delete, Q, or on, then Q. We're good to go. And now it's just going to take pictures. So, sit around and wait. All right, guys, so I'm back at the house. I put my card, my SD card reader, and I'm going to drag and drop all the pictures I just took into a folder. I made a separate folder where all those photos are going to go. So, let's go pull them all off. It ended up being 1,400 pictures on aperture priority instead of the. Um, Instead of the 3,500, 32, 3,500 I thought I was going to get. So now we're just going to copy all of these onto the computer. And that's probably going to take about 10 minutes or so. So I will catch back up with you guys as soon as these copy over. And uh, I'll show you the next step. Okay, guys. So now that I've got all my photos uh, off the SD card 
into a folder. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Photo Matrix. Now in Photo Matrix, I'm going to click on Load Bracket Photos, Browse. Now I've already got it. You, you'll have to go through your folder system to find your photos wherever you put them, but I've already got it set up for mine. I'm going to get the three three photos. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to click OK. Uh, I've already got the settings the way I like them, so I'm going to click OK there. Now what it's going to do is going to align all three photos. Now once it aligns the three photos, I'm going to do some editing um, of the of the aligned three photos, the ACR photo. Then I'm going to save the uh, the settings from the editing that I just did, and then it's going to batch edit all the photos like that. So um, once it aligns, it's going to open up. Um, here's the photo. Let's give it a little more room here. And that looks pretty nice, but I, I think I want to add in, I want to up the saturation a little bit. So let's bring the saturation up a little bit. That looks looks pretty nice right there. All right, so let's just say this is what I want. Um, it, I would do a lot more detail editing if need be, but for this, I'm not going to. So then I'm going to go down to what's called presets. I'm going to click custom. I'm going to save those settings. So it's mainly going to save pretty much the one setting with saturation that I did. Um, then I'm going to go put it in a folder that I have set up for my saved settings. Um, editing, media unlocked, and save settings. And I'm just going to overwrite the one that's already there. So now that it has saved that setting, I'm actually going to go on and exit out of this photo because I no longer need it. I do not want to save that photo. No. Then I'm going to click batch bracket photos. All right, and then I'm going to click the tone compressor settings, default load settings. Now I'm going to go find the settings that I just recently saved. So uh, let's see here. Save settings. This is the saved setting. Open it. So now it's going to open that. Now it has opened up the settings. So all the photos I'm about to batch bracket will be edited the way I just edited the first photo. Now, second, you're going to go down here, click on three. If you did more than three, say you did four or five different exposures, and you're doing um, five pictures into one instead of three pictures into one, then I would click the four or five or all the way up to ten. Actually, it probably goes higher, all the way up to twelve. So, but just doing three photos here. Uh, I need to select a folder to pull them out of. So, let's go find my folder here. Um, let's go down a little bit more. There's the folder with all the photos. Click OK. Now this may be checked right here, the 32-bit. Go on and uncheck that. You don't need it. Um, where do I want to send the photos? I'm going to send them to my Canon T2i folder 2. So this are all my edited HDR photos. You're going to go. I'm going to click OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the batch process. And it's going to take three photos at a time, edit them with those settings, and then put it into that new folder. And then once that done, once that's done, we're going to go into uh, Adobe Lightroom, and we're going to do our final edit, and then we're going to go into Premiere and do our actual time lapse, HDR time lapse, put that together. So um, this this process, I'm doing 1,400 photos. So this process will probably take about mm, five to eight hours, I'm guessing. And at 3,500 photos, the the one I did last time, the one I uploaded to my channel, um, it took roughly I want to say 18 hours to go through all 3,500 photos. So it's going to take a while to go through all these photos. So you're going to you know leave your computer going and just go off and do something else if you got something else you need to work on. So I will be back with you guys for the next step in the process of editing an HDR time lapse photo. Okay guys, so I've copied all of my photos from Photo Matrix into my second folder. So all my HDR photos are in here. So the next step once that is finished is you would open up a Lightroom. And if you guys don't have Lightroom, um, if you can find a way to batch edit all the photos into a JPEG, that would be your next step. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to drag and drop, and I've already got the photos in there, but if you've got Lightroom, you're going to drag and drop your photos right into Lightroom. So once you've done that, you're going to select the first photo, go to develop, um, and then you can go through and develop it 
a little bit nicer however you'd like to do it so um, you can do your again a little bit more editing that photo matrix doesn't allow you have a little quite a few more options in Lightroom so once you've developed your settings the way you like it you're gonna go back to library you're going to right click on the one that you worked on you're gonna scroll down to uh, where is it develop settings you're gonna click on copy settings you're going to click copy. So mainly it just, it's just going to copy all the settings that you just developed. So everything you just did to this photo, you just copied all those settings. Then what you're going to do is control A. Um, right click on another photo that has not been edited. Go back to develop settings. And, and now it's going to paste the settings to every single photo. So now it's going to, it went through and it pasted all the settings I just did and then your last step will be exporting it so command A again make sure you've got them all selected file export now where are we gonna put it um, not the desktop we're gonna select specific folder then we're gonna go to my computer and we're gonna go put it back I'm going to go find it real quick. There it is. I'm going to add in a, a new folder. And we'll make that Canon T2i Photos 3. Click OK. Um, we don't need a subfolder for it. And then JPEG, I'm going to make them 100% quality. And now what it's going to go through is turn every single one of these files into a JPEG so that um, After Effects or Premiere can read it as a time lapse. So um, we're going to click export and now it's going to go through and it's going to export all those files again into another folder. So we have three different folders. We have a folder with no editing done to it. The second folder has all the photos compressed into one photo. Oh, you know, every three photos compressed into one photo edited, and the third folder has the final edit and them turn into JPEGs. Now that's going to take a while, as you can see. That's probably going to take, I would say, roughly an hour or so to do, maybe maybe two hours. So it's going to go through all the photos and turn them into JPEGs. So I will get back with you and show you guys how to actually put it into. Uh, Premiere and actually edit it or put it into Premiere, edit it and export it as a time-lapse so I will see you guys in a little while alright guys so Adobe uh, Lightroom has outsourced all the files into the folder so our next step will be to open up Premiere a new project we're gonna call it time-lapse um, all these settings are good as is right here. We're going to overwrite. Then we're going to do a 4K. So this will be under red, R, 3D, 4K. It's going to be your first one. Click OK with that. It's going to open up. Now we're going to hit Control I to import. Move all this around here. And it's just going to take a second. All right, Control I, and then we're going to click on the first one, click number, stills, then we're going to do Control A. And we're going to click open. Now it's going to open. It's going to take a second for it to open up. There it is. All right, so now we're going to drag and drop that right into video one. Then we're going to go up to sequence render entire work area that shouldn't take too long 
my computer's fairly fast. So while it's rendering it, looks like it's going to take a couple minutes. It's got to render 382 frames, so that's quite a few frames it has to go through and render. And uh, we'll be back once it's rendered, and I'll show you actually what it looks like um, right here on the screen. And then we will outsource it, export it, and I'll show you how to ex uh, the export settings. So uh, be back with you guys in a minute. Okay, guys, it has completed rendering. So what I'm going to do next is uh, the, the clip ended up being around 15 seconds, a little over 15 seconds long for the 1400 photos. And I'm going to play it over here. It's going to play over here. And you guys can kind of see what it looks like. And I'll add the full screen version at the very end of this film, or the very end of this tutorial, so you can see it there as well. Um, so our next step would be to export it. I'm not going to add any music or anything to it. Um, that just takes extra time, so we're not going to go in and add music. So I'm going to go over here and click uh, Export. I'm going to go with Media. Now I've already got a preset. Um, my ace ticks are, let's see here, I've already made a preset down here. Let me just pull it up. Actually, my presets are actually down here. YouTube H YouTube HD 1080, I've already got my sets. But just to get your quality set up, here's where you do your width. You'll go down here, you can click on video. And then depending on the quality you want, like this. This is the quality as far as your bit rate should be set up for YouTube. Um, if it's a small clip like this, like I'm going to go on and make it 100% a, a quality because it's not going to take up any more megabytes. Um, now, if it was a 10 minute long video, that's going to be like 4 or 5 gigs probably. So, But this is such a small clip that I'm just going to give it 100%. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to click export. And let's see where I got it exporting to. I'm going to. I'm going to re-export it to a different location. So let's go to my computer. And media locked. And save. Alright, so now it's going to export. And that is how you do an HD time lapse video right there. Um, from start to finish. And if you guys got any questions, leave comments, send me a message. Uh, I'd be more than happy to answer it. I'm not an expert at this process quite yet, so I've only done it like four or five times, so I'm still learning new tricks and tips to doing ACR time lapse. So anyways, you guys have a wonderful day. Check me out on Facebook at David D Images or Twitter again at David D Images.